Welcome to the Holy Word Channel. We will broadcast daily Mass live. Please keep your soul quiet and fervent to start today's Mass. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel to receive notifications about daily Mass as soon as possible. May God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. All together, I confess to Almighty God, and, and to you, my brothers sisters, and sisters, that I have greatly sinned sin in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest
Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpassed the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. God made man and woman for each other, and in marriage made the two of them one. In the Gospel, Jesus refers to this original will of God in prohibiting divorce. The first reading. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God said, It is not good, good for the man to be alone. I will make a suitable partner for him. So the Lord God formed out of the ground various wild animals and various birds of the air. And he brought them to the man to see what he would call them. Whatever the man called each of them would be its name. The man gave names to all the cattle, all the birds of the air, and all wild animals. But none proved to be that suitable partner of the man. So the Lord God cast a deep sleep on the man, and while he was asleep, he took out one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. The Lord God then built up into a woman the rib that he had taken from the man. When he brought her to the man, the man said, this one, at last, is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, for out of her men this one has been taken. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and clings to his wife and the two of them become one flesh. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Lord bless us all the days of our lives. May the Lord bless us all the days of our lives. Blessed are you who fear the Lord, who walk in his ways. For you shall eat the fruit of your handiwork, Blessed shall you be and favored. May the Lord bless us all the days of our lives. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the recesses of your home. Your children like olive plants around your table. May the Lord bless us all the days of our lives. Behold, thus is the man blessed with fears, who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. May the Lord bless us all the days of our lives. May you see your children's children. Peace be upon Israel. May the Lord bless us all the days of our lives. By becoming man and experiencing the bitterness of death, Jesus becomes a brother to man and woman and brings them back to the love of God. The second reading. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, he, for a little while, was made lower than the angels, that by the grace of God, he might taste death for everyone. 
for it was fitting that he, for whom and through whom all things exist, and bringing many children to glory, should make the leader to their salvation perfect through suffering. He who consecrates and those who are being consecrated all have one origin. Therefore, he is not ashamed to call them brothers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All please stand. If we love one another, God remains in us, and His love is brought to perfection in us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The Pharisees approached Jesus and asked, Is it lawful for a husband to divorce his wife? They were testing him. He said to them in reply, What did Moses command you? They replied, Moses permitted a husband to write a bill of divorce and dismiss her. But Jesus then told them, Then, because of the hardness of your hearts, he wrote you this commandment. But from the beginning of creation, God made the male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together no human being must separate. In the house, the disciples again questioned Jesus about this. He said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. And people are bringing children to him that he might touch them. But the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he became indignant and said to them, Let the children come to me. Do not prevent them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as this. Amen, I say to you, whoever does not accept the kingdom of God, like a child, will not enter it. Then he embraced them, and bless them, placing his hands on them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, my dear brothers and sisters, good morning. In today's Gospel, taken from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, verses 2 to 16, Jesus is approached by Pharisees who test him by asking, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? 
Jesus responded by pointing back to God's original intention for marriage rooted in the book of Genesis. From the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Here, Jesus reaffirms the indissolubility of marriage by declaring what therefore God has joined together, let no man separate. My dear friends, my dear brothers and sisters, at the heart of this passage in the gospel today is the sacred nature of marriage, a lifelong covenant reflecting God's unbreakable love for His people. A lifelong covenant reflecting God's unbreakable love for His people. This teaching stands in contrast to the Pharisees' focus on the Mosaic law, which permitted divorce due to the hardness of heart, as Jesus pointed out. Jesus goes deeper, emphasizing that marriage is not a mere legal contract, but a divine vocation, a union that reflects God's plan for humanity. My dear brothers and sisters, the church, drawing from Jesus' teaching, continues to uphold marriage as a sacrament in familiaris consortio of St. John Paul II, who speaks of marriage as a covenant of love, calling the family the domestic church, where faith is first lived and passed on. He reminds us that the vocation to marriage is a call to holiness. The vocation to marriage is a call to holiness. Holiness, where husband and wife mirrors the love of Christ for the church. A love that is faithful, a love that is fruitful, and a love that is sacrificial. The love of husband and wife mirrors the love of Christ for the church. A love that is faithful, a love that is fruitful, and a love that is sacrificial. In modern times, my dear friends, the church remains a strong advocate for the dignity of marriage and family life. The Synod, the Synod of Bishops on the Family and Pope Francis Apostolic Exhortation Amoris Laetitiae, Amoris Laetitia, addresses the many challenges that married life, married couples face today, including societal pressures, economic hardships, and personal struggles. Yet, even in the midst of these challenges, the church, our church, affirms that marriage is a path to sanctity and a reflection of God's love for humanity. Marriage is a path to sanctity and a reflection of God's love for humanity. Marriage, my dear friends, requires ongoing commitment, communication, and self-giving. In a world that often promotes individualism and temporary relationships, the church, our church, stands firm in her teaching that marriage is meant to last a lifetime. Marriage is meant to last a lifetime. It is a partnership that involves sacrifice, forgiveness, and unconditional love. 
virtues that are nurtured through prayer, the sacraments, and the grace of God. And from that perspective, my dear friends, we could understand why we strongly oppose divorce. Why we strongly oppose divorce. Because for us, Christian Catholics, marriage should last a lifetime. If you are in your heart of hearts convinced of your Catholic Christian faith, then we should defend the sanctity of marriage. We should defend it against everything that wants to destroy it. My dear friends, at the same time, the church extends compassion and support to those who experience the pain of broken relationships. Amoris Leticia encourages pastors, us, to accompany and guide those in difficult marital situations, offering them the hope of healing and reconciliation. It recognizes that while the ideal of marriage is one of permanence, we must approach individuals with pastoral care, helping them find God's mercy and presence in the most challenging circumstances. In the final part of today's gospel, Jesus blesses children, saying, Let the little children come to me, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. My dear friends, my dear brothers and sisters, here we see the close connection between marriage and family life. The love between husband and wife naturally overflows into the gift of children who are to be welcomed, to be cherished, and to be raised in the faith. The family becomes a living sign of God's love, a place where the gospel is proclaimed not only through words, but through the daily witness of love, of service, and of sacrifice. And so as we reflect on this gospel passage today, let us renew our commitment as baptized Catholic Christians to supporting and strengthening marriages and families, knowing that they are at the heart of God's plan for humanity. And they are the foundation of a healthy and holy society. Let us take good care of marriage and family life. As we have been taught, the family is the basic unit of society. If the family is destroyed, then we could expect a destroyed society. But if the family is holy, then we could expect a holy and healthy society. Please all stand. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God. The Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory, to judge the living and the dead, and His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, you raised marriage and family life into a living sacrament of your, li of your life and love. We pray to you that the bonds of love may grow stronger and among us. In trust we pray, Lord of love, hear our prayer. Lord of love, hear our prayer. May church leaders continue to guide married couples and their families with listening and understanding hearts, just as Jesus did, we pray. Lord of love, hear our prayer. May those who are in public office create programs that help families develop mutual love and understanding without compromising human dignity. We pray. Lord of love, hear our prayer. May the leaders of our nation speak out bravely against various evils that degrade the dignity of the human person and destroy the environment. We pray. Lord of love, hear our prayer. May married couples who are having difficulties in their relationships be able to reach out to each other so that they may grow in faithfulness and love, we pray. Lord of love, hear our prayer. May all those suffering for the sake of the gospel find hope and healing in the loving care of Jesus, we pray. Lord of love, hear our prayer. May the dead attain the eternal vision of heaven so that they may gain the future resurrection, we pray. Lord of love, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the urgent concerns of our community and our personal intentions. We pray. Lord of love, hear our prayer. Loving Father, strengthen the bonds of love that keep us together as one family in Christ. May this love be manifested in our words and deeds. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We we'll lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly really right and just our duty and salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son. By whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exultation we acclaim. the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose Romeo, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say. help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I live you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
you in a healing remedy. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume through Christ our Lord. Amen. All please be seated for some announcement. Angot sa aton pagsaulog sang bulan sang Santo Rosario. Ginsuguran na naton ang paghiwat sang Don Rosary Procession sang tinalikdan nga Martes. Kag magapadayon ini sa bugos nga bulan sang Oktubre. Sa liwat, ang aton schedule sang prosesyon sa kaagahon. Amo ang masunod. Lunes, tub-tub Sabado, 5 a.m. Domingo, 4.30 a.m. Kun Merkules, ang novena to our Mother of Perpetual Health, pagahiwaton gidlang kada hapon sa takna nga 4.30 p.m. Sa masunod nga semana, yari ang mga barangay kag-organisasyon nga magapanguna sang aton prosesyon. October 7, Barangay Kasing-Kasing. October 8, Barangay Infante. October 9, Barangay Katilingban. October 10, Barangay Salvasyon Habog-Habo. October 11, Barangay Poblasyon. October 12, Neo Catechumini. October 13, Ladies of Charity. Sa kada hapon sa bugos nga bulan, magahiwat man kita sa pagpangamuyo sa Santo Rosario sa sulod sa simbahan. 30 minutes antes sa Santos nga misa. Ginaagdagid ang mga tumuluo nga magbuylog sa sining aton hilikoton sa pagpadungog sa mahal nga Birhen Maria, reyna sa Santos nga tuod nga Rosario. Ginapahibalo sa tanan nga sumugod October 1, mangin available na sa opisina sa aton parokya ang mga sobre para sa piyesta minatay. Sa sining nga mga sobre, igasulat ang pangalan sa aton mga minatay. Ginaagda ang tanan sa pagbuylo, agod masakop sa common nga responso, kagmahatagan man sa nagakaigo nga mga pangamuyo. ang aton mga pinalangga nga nagtaliwan. Ginapahanungdom sa tanan nga may mga minatay nga nalubong sa sementeryo sang molo, ilabinagid sa mga may balayran ukon moroso, palihog magpakigangot lang sa aton parish office sa paghibalo kagpaghusay sang inyo balayran. Nagahilapit na ang aton pagsaulog sang piyesta solemne sang tanan nga mga santos. Angot sini ang parokya ni Santa Ana diri sa molo magahiwat sang March of Saints nga gintiguluhan Halloween. Kun sa diin ang mga parokyano ilabinagid ang mga kabataan nagasuksok sang panamton nga nagarepresenta sang isa ka santos sang simbahang katoliko kag ini pagahiwaton sa October 31 2024 sa takna nga alas 3 sa hapon diri sa sulod sang simbahan angot sin ginaagda ang tanan ilabinagid ang mga ginikana nga luyag ipasakop ang ilang mga kabataan sa sining nahauna nga paghiwat sang aton March of Saints nga magpakigangot la sa atang parish office ukon sa mga youth on duty nga yara sa aton pertahan malapit sa aton konvento para sa dugang nga mga impormasyon magbisita lang sa aton Facebook page madamugid nga salamat all please stand the Lord be with you and with your spirit and may Almighty God bless you the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Good morning.